What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new Ryzen powered mini PC from B-Link and I've had a couple days to mess around with this. And when it comes to the APU that this tiny PC is using, we've actually tested it out on the channel before, but this is the best performing unit with that APU that I've tested so far. So what we have here is the brand new SER4 from B-Link. I'm a huge fan of the new design that they have coming out with their mini PCs. I'm really glad that they changed this up. And in the last year or so, B-Link has been adding name brand RAM and storage to their units. But like I mentioned, I do love the look of this thing. We've got those red vents on the side. We've got that big AMD logo across the top. Unfortunately, it is not LED backlit like its bigger brother. But I really do like the way this thing looks. Now, inside of the box, you're also going to receive a 65 watt power supply. There's an HDMI cable in there and some mounting hardware. Taking a look at the I.O. up front here, we've got two full size USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports and a USB Type-C port. This is full function it does support video out 4k 60 unfortunately you can't power the unit from this port not much going on around the sides but we do have these really nice looking red cooling vents and around back we get gigabit ethernet we've got one usb 2.0 port another usb 3.1 gen 2 dual full-size hdmi ports so this will support up to three displays out including that usb type c on the front there and we also have our power in for the 65 watt power supply Checking out the internals here, really easy to get to, just four screws on the bottom. This is using crucial RAM right out of the box. We've got 32 gigabytes running at 3200 megahertz, and obviously it's in dual channel. We've got an Intel 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD, and this little PC does support a 2.5 inch drive, so you can easily add more storage. Now I was planning on pulling this whole thing apart, but they do have an exploded view over on their website, give you a quick look at that. But now it's time to jump right into the specs. So when it comes to the APU on this mini PC, it's using the Ryzen 7 4800U. Out of the box, it's set at 25 watts, but we can easily take it up to 45. Eight cores, 16 threads. We've got a base clock of 1.8 gigahertz and a boost up to 4.2. Built-in Radeon 8 graphics. The version I have here did come pre-installed with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz, but they're also selling a 16 gigabyte version. This also came pre-installed with a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD, but like we saw, we can add a 2.5 inch drive. It's got Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, and it comes pre-installed with Windows 11. All right, so here we are. I've got everything set up. I've been messing around with it for a little while now. I've got some games installed. I've tested out some gaming and some emulation on this device. I've also run some benchmarks. We'll take a look at all of that in this video. But I'm really impressed on how they have this set up. Now, on the channel, we've taken a look at the 4800U before, and I'm not sure if it's due to driver updates or not. But this thing's performing really, really well in basically everything that I've tested so far. One of the main things I always test with these mini PCs, especially with the Ryzen variants, is the stock TDP, and from the BIOS, we can only go up to 25 watts, but we can always change that. Real quick, let me run a Prime 95 test here. So we'll just go with a stress test, and right here I have core temp up. We're at around 25 watts straight out of the box, but we're gonna go ahead and change this. Now while this is all running, I'm just gonna go ahead and open up AMD APU Tuning Utility, and we'll keep all those windows up, but I do have a custom preset here. I've set this to 50 watts, we're gonna update, apply and you'll see this jump right up and it settles around 45 to 46 watts really good performance while it's set up like this and you can adjust this however you'd like i've also overclocked the gpu on this to 1900 megahertz through all of the gaming you'll see in this video but taking the tdp up on this 4800u works out really well and the built-in cooling system they have under normal usage and even pc gaming can handle that 50 watt threshold Really, around 45. I think that's what we're maxing out at. But taking a look at, you know, just everyday normal desktop usage with this little PC, we definitely have plenty of RAM. It's going to work out just fine for web browsing, email checking, you want to do some photo editing on this little thing. Even some 1080p video editing would definitely be possible, even at that 25 watts right out of the box. But you know, when web browsing, everything loads up really quickly. Just head over here. 4K video playback, not an issue with the 4800U. I usually test it, but we've gone through that several times. This will handle 4K60 playback, whether you want to stream from your favorite app or do native playback from an internal hard drive, a USB stick, or an external hard drive. It's really up to you. One of the main things I wanted to test in this video was gaming performance while also test some emulation. But first up, let's go ahead and check out some benchmarks that I ran on this thing. 
Geekbench 5 single core, 1,168, multi, 7,295. Not bad at all, and even at 25 watts, we're going to get about the same single core score and around 5,900 multi-core. Moving over to 3D Mark Night Raid, total score here, 15,237. And finally, we've got Firestrike with a 3,716. For integrated graphics, especially on a 4000 series Ryzen APU, it's not looking bad. Remember, this is a U version of the 4800. It's not an H version. Time to check out some PC gaming, and first up we have Street Fighter V 900p medium settings. So we're at full medium here, but if you did want to go up to 1080p, you can set this to a low medium mix 1080p and still get a constant 60 out of it but 900p, in my opinion, still looks great with this game. Checking out Halo Infinite, and initially going into this, I thought it was going to fall right on its face, you know, under 20, but we actually got an average of 41 FPS. We're at 720p, low settings, and this is definitely some of the best performance that I've seen out of the 4800U with PC gaming so far. And to tell you the truth, I know it has a lot to do with the updated and optimized drivers from AMD, but we're still getting really great performance out of this APU. Here's GTA 5 at 1080p normal settings, and with this I got an average of 73 FPS. In the past, with the same chip and other systems, I was only able to do about 900p with the same frame rate here, but we're at 1080 with GTA 5 now. And if you take a look at Afterburner up in the top left hand corner, we're pulling around 48 watts. Our temperature has hit around 84 degrees Celsius. This fan is kicking up, but it's not super loud. It doesn't sound like a jet engine. Next up, we've got Forza Horizon 5, 900p low. I got an average of 67 FPS out of this. Now we're only at 900p low settings. It's still a really enjoyable experience, but by the end of this video, I do want to do a little bit of an experiment. These Ryzen APUs do support FreeSync, and while it's not going to up your frame rate, it can make everything feel a little smoother without any kind of screen tearing, so we will take a look at that. Here's the new God of War port, we're at 720p, low settings, and I got an average of 42 FPS. Right now, I know we're pulling a lot more wattage than the Steam Deck would, but we're on par with that kind of performance we'll see out of that system. And when it comes to the CPU side of things in this mini PC versus the Steam Deck, this would definitely beat it every day. We've got it by 4 cores and a higher boost clock, but the Steam Deck's RDNA 2 based iGPU will trump this Radeon Vega 8, even if this Vega 8 was overclocked to around 2100 MHz. But I did want to test one thing out. So here we have God of War again, but we're at 1080p original settings and I've locked it at 30. We can play this at 30 FPS, 1080p with the original settings on the 4800U in this little PC. And adding a FreeSync monitor to this would definitely get rid of any kind of screen tearing at all. And the final PC game I wanted to test here was Elden Ring. We're at 720p low settings and we're getting an average of 40 FPS. I didn't think we were going to run this over, you know, 30 FPS, but getting that average of 40, and most of the time we're actually over 40, feels really decent with this setup. Alright, so like I mentioned, I did want to test out FreeSync here. So it's really hard to show off in a YouTube video, but this is a portable monitor with FreeSync. You don't have to be plugged in through USB Type-C, but this USB Type-C port does support video out, so it powers the monitor and everything like that. I've got FreeSync enabled in the Radeon settings. I've got FreeSync enabled on this little monitor. And we're running Forza Horizon 5 here at 1080p with a low-medium mix. We're not going to get an average 60, but with no screen tearing going on, since we have that free sync on, it does feel really smooth. And if I didn't have that FPS counter on screen right now, I'd say that this was definitely running at 60 FPS. Free sync isn't going to up the frame rate, it's not going to make your mini PC faster. What it's going to do is eliminate that screen tearing to give you the illusion that that game is running at full speed. And through all of my testing, I've actually had a really good time with FreeSync on these Ryzen-based mini PCs. But with the way this game is set up right now and how well it's running, I wouldn't mind playing this at all. 
Now it's time to move over to some emulation, and with this little mini PC, just seeing how well it's running the PS3 emulator, RPCS3, I do want to give it its own dedicated emulation video. Originally I was going to throw a few systems in here, but seeing how well this is running, even with some of the harder to run games, I think it deserves its own video. So we've got Tekken 6 here, running with the Vulcan back in and RPCS3, not a super hard game to emulate, and it's going to run at full speed, so let's move over to Skate 3. Now if you do any kind of PS3 emulation, you know how hard this one can be to run, especially on mobile chips. But seeing this performance here with Skate 3 using the Vulcan back end with RPCS3 is very, very promising. We're at 60 FPS, and yes, we are pulling some wattage from that APU. But this is one of those games with this emulator that loves extra cores and threads. This doesn't mean it's going to run every PS3 game at full speed, but this is looking really good for emulation on the SER4. One reason some people might want to opt for a mini PC like this is power consumption. So this is total system power consumption. Through all of my testing, I have this plugged into a kilowatt meter at the wall. Idle, it's averaging around 11 watts. 4K video playback jumps up to 18 watts. Average gaming will change depending on what you have the TDP set at, but around 32 watts at that 25 watt TDP and 63 watts when you're set up at that 45 or 50 watt TDP. It's really going to depend. But the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall while maxing out the GPU, all 8 cores and 16 threads, was 68 watts. So overall, this little mini PC turned out to be the best performing 4800U device that I've ever tested, be it a laptop or a mini PC. And it really comes down to the fact that we're able to up that TDP to around 45 to 50 watts on this thing, which really helps out with keeping the clocks up on all 8 cores and 16 threads and the Radeon 8 GPU. And even at that higher wattage, the highest I saw the temps go on this was 93 degrees Celsius, which definitely does seem high, but this thermal throttles at 95 and we didn't hit it. Now I'm sure we could if we run Cinebench R23 for 10 minutes straight, maxing out all the cores, but under everyday normal use, gaming, and emulation, you're not going to see thermal throttle on this little setup, even at 45 watts. I'm just really impressed with this little setup, and if you're interested in seeing at least one more video on the SER4, let me know in the comments below. I do have one plan. We want to get some emulation out of the way on this thing. And if you like these mini PC videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn notifications on so you know when I post the next one. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in learning more about the B-Link SER4, I will leave a couple links in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.